We're super excited that everyone is able to attend us for this week's Cyper conversation. We have a very exciting guest that we're going to be super excited to hear about later on. So we'll just wait a couple more seconds here for everyone to join us. All right, looks like they're all about here. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone to this week's Cyper conversation brought to you by Periton. I'm Annabelle Klosterman. I'm a Cyper outreach leader and Cyber operations student here at Dakota State University. I'm also joined by Kanthi. She's Cyper's chief of operations and graduate, graduate student. She will be handling today's Q&A portion of the program. And I'm also joined by Dr. Ashley Podoroski, one of Cyper's co-founders. We're super excited that everyone's able to join us for this week. Before I introduce our guests, I do wanna remind everyone that we do have a Q&A um, section of today's program. Down at the bottom of your screen, you should see a Q&A button that you can use to enter in your questions. Our guest today is Tia Hopkins. She is the VP of Global Solutions Architect, and she holds two master's degree in security, a bachelor's in information technology, and several industry certifications. She was recognized by SC Media as a 2019 Reboot Leadership Award recipient in the Outstanding Educator category, as well as the Software's Report Top 25 Women Leaders in Cybersecurity and Cyber Defense Magazine's Top 100 Women in Cybersecurity in both um, 2020. She is a professor of cybersecurity and is currently pursuing her PhD in organizational leadership. She recently founded Empower Her Cybersecurity, which is a nonprofit organization aimed at empowering women of color to be successful in the cybersecurity field. So without further ado, go ahead and take it away, Atia. Thank you so much. Uh, th thanks for having me. So um, I'm, I'm sitting here like, oh, what else is there to say uh, about myself after that, uh, that introduction? Um, but again, uh, Tia Hopkins, um, current role VP Global Solutions Architecture um, at, at East Entire. And, and East Entire is a managed security services provider. Just to add a bit of, of context into to what my, my day job is, and I lead the team uh, that is responsible for having conversations uh, with our customers um, and potential buyers or subscribers to our, our security services. Uh, we have the discussions to uncover pain points in customer environments, you know, what's, what are your security concerns, uh, understanding their uh, infrastructure and security tools they currently have in their environment, and then uh, producing or, or putting together a solution that uh, will best enable us uh, to drive their desired security outcomes in, in terms of um, what their focus is. Uh, so I actually started in that role as an individual contributor. I was um, a, a direct uh, solution architect supporting a sales rep, uh, driving those the discussions. And, and I joined the company uh, three years ago. And then I would say uh, a year and a half into my role there, I was in a team leader role. And then a few months after that, I was, I was leading the global uh, organization. And uh, it's funny because I, I ran from leadership for, for quite some time. I like to be a doer. I like to be hands-on. And I feared that the less I did, the less I would be able to do. Uh, and then I made a decision that it was really up to me, you know, becoming a leader would really um, broaden my reach, right? And I, and I would be able to have a greater impact even though I wasn't uh, directly during the, doing the work. Uh, and then to keep my skills fresh, I just you know, continued to, uh, to study um, and pursue certifications and, and you know, spin up labs and, and play around with technologies and, and stay on top of what's going on in the industry. Um, in terms of kind of how I ended up here in general uh, in the realm of cybersecurity, uh, it's funny when I'm asked the question, how did you plan your path and, and how did you figure out how you were going to break in? Because the answer to that is, is, is I didn't. Um, I actually um, didn't really choose to pursue cybersecurity until I would say 10 to 12 years into my career in technology in general. And then I just kind of fell into it and, and it just ended up working for me. Uh, in the way that that my brain works and the way I process information and, and what I'm passionate about passionate about. I actually started out 
uh, as uh, a uh, installer for the phone company for, for DSL. That was high speed internet. I'm, and I'm not gonna date myself and tell you how many years ago that was, but back when, when people were, uh, when AOL was all the rave, but we were accessing AOL via dial up modems. And then uh, this, this thing called DSL came out, stands for digital subscriber line. And that was considered high speed internet. And I would say it's probably uh, maybe a 20th as fast as, as the internet that we're used to, the internet speeds we're used to today. And that, that's probably being nice. It was probably a lot slower. Uh, but that's where I started, you know, doing those installations, um, retiring those dial up modems. And I started to get questions. Oh, how do I do this on more than one computer? How do I get on Wi Fi? And I kind of got tired of saying, I don't know. It wasn't my job, I wasn't responsible for it, but I wanted to be able to help. So that's when I kind of set out and started building labs. I got a PCs for Dummies book. I got a networking for Dummies book. I, I couldn't afford much. So um, I went to my local Goodwill and, and got some cheap machines and, and built a lab at home. And, and I was self-taught uh, that way. And that turned into me doing some moonlighting where I was actually helping customers uh, network in their homes and in their businesses. And my knowledge just continued to grow from there based on the questions uh, that I was asked, you know, in the interaction that I was having. Um, and my career was pretty much that way, um, where, where I found myself being able to take advantage of opportunities. It, it really ended up being uh, just due to me not settling for, you know, whatever my level of knowledge was today. It had to be greater tomorrow. I have to know more tomorrow. I have to be able to do better uh, tomorrow and just remaining curious and, and hungry um, and confident in my abilities because confidence is really, really, really uh, important, especially when you're starting out. You know, it's you uh, that has to articulate the value that you're going to be able to bring uh, to an organization. And that's critical when you're still working toward getting the experience and documentation behind you uh, to prove it. So, anyway, fast forward. 10 years into my career, I've now, you know, dropped out of college four times. I just can't, can't get it together. Um, I, I start, I stop. I don't like going to campus. My brain's not working. I don't want to read this book. Um, and I was in an IT director role because all the while I was still pursuing knowledge, even though I was not uh, finishing these degrees or getting these certifications. And, and that's when I decided to pivot uh, and, and I did some market research. I don't can't tell you what led me to do that, but I did some market research to see what my options were. And where I landed was choosing between cybersecurity, cloud, um, and development. And, and coding has never been my thing. That's thing one. A lot of individuals think that you need to be a coder uh, to have a successful career in cybersecurity. And I'm here to tell you that's not true because I can't code and, and I'm doing okay. Uh, so that wasn't, I, I decided that wasn't for me. Cloud, I, I just wasn't uh, confident in my ability to drive a ton of value. But when I looked into cybersecurity, it seemed like a natural transition for me because my background uh, was in uh, networking from an IT perspective. And so a lot of what I was already doing was relative to cybersecurity, you know, setting up secure networks and making sure network devices were securely configured. And so it just seemed like a natural uh, transition for me. And along the way, I, I got myself together. I got my finished off my bachelor's degree. And once I finished, I finished something that I tried so many times and hadn't gotten it done. And it was like this is this chip on my shoulder, right? Like I need to get this done. Once I finished that, it, it was like I was addicted to accomplishing. I was addicted to uh, succeeding. And I didn't even take a break before I went and got my first master's. And I didn't take a break when I went and got my second master's. And while I was doing all those things, um, I was uh, obtaining certifications at, at the same time. And once I really pivoted, uh, made a hard pivot into cybersecurity, I, I found that it was my calling. And, you know, I, I'm sure that uh, many of you have heard the phrase, when you love what you do, it doesn't feel like you're working a day in your life. It, it's true. You know, I'm really passionate about this. And, and it's difficult to succeed in information technology in general if you're not passionate about it, because there's always something new that you need to learn. You have to stay ahead of the latest technology to remain relevant, relevant uh, and especially in cybersecurity, 
right? Because it's a game of cat and mouse. Uh, attackers find a new method, we figure out how to stop it, they figure out a new one, we figure out how to stop it. And so it's never just one and done, right? You have to stay on top of what's going on. And I mean, that led me to where I am today um, from uh, an implementation role uh, to a pre-sale support role and then uh, into the leadership role. And, and I think a large part of my success is just attributed to <laughs> me being bullish. I'm just stubborn. You know, I don't take no for an answer. If, if I ask, you know, is this the right opportunity? Can, can I get in on this project? Or, you know, how can I gain this experience? If I'm told no, that doesn't mean the door is closed. It just means I need to go ask someone else, right? And, and that's the approach I've I've always taken, and, and, and I'm an athlete as well. I think I, I trained for my career and I approached my career, even my leadership, uh, the way I did when I was playing sports and, and I lead the way I did when I, when, the way I do uh, when I'm coaching sports and just having that desire, that passion, that strength to just always pursue your dreams um, is just, it, it's critically important because uh, the role gets tough. You have to know who you are and own that um, and feel good about that and you also have to know your why. Why am I going down this path? Why am I doing this? Why is this the career that I'm pursuing? Because it will get hard and you'll need to circle back to that to remind yourself you know, why you're in the fight um, so, so that you keep going. So um, that's, that's you know, high level, uh, my story. Uh, you know, I, I talk to a lot of individuals that feel like there's this charted path um, into cybersecurity or, or into tech and I'm here to tell you that some of the most successful people that I talked to in cybersecurity didn't choose it. Um, starting out, they they fell into it at some point in their career, or they had some skill set that was really transferable uh, into cybersecurity and worked out really well for them. So, you know, I would say if it's something you're interested in, don't sell yourself short. Ask the hard questions. Remain curious and, and know your why, right? Know why you're doing it and, and be specific when, when you ask questions. Know um, what it is that, that you're after. You know, it, it's a challenge for me. I, I want to help everybody, everybody that is interested in cybersecurity. I want to help everyone be successful uh, because it, it is, it's critical, right, to the security of, of ourselves as individuals, our families, our nation. It's a big deal. Um, but when someone comes to me and says, I want to get into cybersecurity, I'm like, okay, well, tell me more. How can I help? What do you want to do? Um, the, the, next, the next statement is, well, I want to be in cybersecurity. And that means so many things. So, you know, know what's available, know what speaks to you, right? Know what speaks to you goes back to my point of, of knowing who you are um, and standing firmly in that um, and, and standing in your power and your greatness uh, and, and knowing that you can do all things if you, you put your mind to it, even when it gets tough and um, just hanging in there. So um, I feel like I've been babbling. I'm, I'm gonna pause and, and see if, uh, if it's time to take questions. Theo, thank you so much for sharing your journey with us and you were not, definitely not <laughs> babbling, no. Okay. Because it's all our journeys are so different when we come into cybersecurity. And it's so important for everybody to know that there's no one singular path to come in. And there are more opportunities for younger students these days to, you know, just get into cyber directly, but we all took like different paths, I wanna yeah. say. Not unconventional, different paths yeah. <laughs> is what I believe. All right. All so right. Um, thank you so much for being on here today. Yeah. Um, while we wait for questions from our audience, I do have a few questions from just by reading your bio. Okay. So you recently founded the Empower, Empower Her. Mm -hmm. Did I say it correctly? Okay. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Absolutely. I, I am pained by the lack of representation of diversity in general, okay, in tech, but specifically cybersecurity. Um, and then you drill down into diversity and, and you separate women. It gets really, really bad. Um, and then I'll, I'll speak on the, the women of color aspect of it uh, in a moment. But the big thing about being successful is that you have to believe you can be right that starts it starts in here 
And so if I am, you know, young and I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with my life, and I think I want to do this cybersecurity thing, um, and I'm female, and I look across the industry and I don't see anyone that looks like me. Um, I, I don't see anyone in leadership that looks like me. I don't see anyone that I might be able to reach out to for mentorship that's successful. That's a deterrent. Right. I, I'm going to go somewhere where I feel like I can be successful. And maybe I don't see anyone that looks like me because I can't be successful here. So I, I'm going to go do something else. So that's a big part of, of why um, I, I wanted to start the organization. And then the specific focus on women of color for me is about representation. Obviously, being a woman of color, I'm able to relate you know, to other women of color and be a, a more direct representative um, of the possibilities for, uh, for women of color. And, and the goal is to provide just a safe space for women to figure it out. Just come, ask questions, fail, say something silly. It's okay. 60% of our members are brand new to the space and still trying to figure out what it is that they want to do or if they even want to do it. But having the opportunity to just be with other like-minded individuals, both new to the space, as well as individuals that have found success, I think is really powerful for demystifying all the things that, that can be uh, breaking into cybersecurity, like the, the perceived barrier to entry is so high. You know, I can't tell you how many folks I talk to that, that think I have to be a master coder, I have to be super technical, I have to be all these things, and you don't. There's so many different paths um, that, that you can take. So I'm just trying to be out here with a megaphone saying, you can do it if you want to, and I'll show you how if you're interested. And that's, that's really what it's about for me. Oh my God, I love that so much. I love what you just said so much because there are so many misconceptions that you have, like you just said, that you have to be a good coder, that you have to be really technical. I'm not a coder. I'm not a technical person. Like I'm talking about myself. I hate programming. <laughs> like I couldn't program even to save my own life. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a technical person. I'm more on the soft side of cybersecurity. I want to do risk assessments and, you know, it's, it's more different. I want to teach, but it's just, there are so many misconceptions and, and we commend you for taking up this initiative to bring more awareness and what people can be, especially women of color in cybersecurity. That's amazing. Huh. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And you know, look, I went through it too, you know, oh, I'm going to be a leader and I'm in cybersecurity and that my skills are going to be questioned. Or if I take on a sales role, am I going to be seen as less technical? And the reality is, like I was saying about football, there's a place for everyone from the super uber masterminded technical individual all the way to the strategically minded individual that can take an entire program and, and make sense of it all, right? And develop a secure, uh, a security program that's gonna, you know, protect an organization. And then you have all the resources underneath that umbrella uh, that have the specific skill sets that, that go into that. But the spectrum is just so broad. And, and I say, don't let anyone force you into a box because it's not necessary. Very true. So um, with regard to your job, you're the VP of Global Solutions Architecture. So could you tell us more about what exactly that position entails and what your day-to-day -day looks like more? I'm somewhere between a, a firefighter and, uh, no, I'm kidding. It does, it does feel like a lot of uh, firefighting. So they, I, I feel like there's uh, two sides to my role. There's you know, being directly connected to the business, understanding, you know, where the business is, is trying to go from a, from a market perspective and ensuring that um, the initiatives of, of my team are aligned to that, but then also making sure my team has the things that they need to be successful, right? And as a leader, that, that requires being a forward thinker, right? And having the foresight to say, hey, um, it looks like our strategy is going to be shifting in this direction, let me go get some enablement for my team to make sure we're able to facilitate those discussions. So, you know, it is a, a mixture of staying on top of what's going on in the industry broadly, right? Because as a leader, uh, people tend to expect more from me in, in my conversations with them be, because of the, the level of visibility that I have. Um, but then also keeping my technical skills up to date because, yeah, I need to be able to speak to a CISO, 
but there's times where I'm gonna have to speak to the team that's deploying our services and is gonna be working with our security operations center. And if I can't keep up, I lose uh, credibility. So it's kind of like, it, it really just depends on what the day is. I might be in a conversation for a deal that's really complex and we have to get really strategic. I might be building out a model for, for, for our next uh, go to market strategy. I might be uh, having conversations with the, with the CFO around, you know, headcount and budget. Um, but it, it really is, I feel like the best of both worlds because I do get to spread my wings and, and learn more about the business side, but I'm still living uh, in the technical side and that's not going away. Awesome. I like your job. Very cool. <laughs> so because you've always, or like you said, you wanted to be a leader, you knew you wanted to be a leader. What can younger students or young individuals do to grow their skills uh, or to grow their leadership skills or their cybersecurity leadership skills? Um, I'm a big believer in, in leading by doing. And so I take a very diplomatic approach uh, to the way that, that I lead. And so anything I expect of my team, I make sure that I'm able to do myself, right? Because your team's gonna, gonna look up to you. So, you know, if, if you are pursuing leadership, make sure you really understand the function uh, that it is you're, you're looking to lead. Because sure, it is about your business acumen on the business side, but you have an entire team that's going to be looking to you for guidance and a big part of being able to establish rapport and credibility and build relationships with those individuals um, lies in how much they feel like they can rely on you for support and that's both uh, making sure they're enabled to do their job but also being able to um, give them guidance on, on how to do it so really really know your craft that's that's thing one but two you know I have conversations where individuals think leadership is like you're, you're on this pedestal and you're this big, you know, uh, entity and everyone looks up to you and there's all this glory, but that's, that's really uh, the successful leaders that I'll, I'll say I um, um, align to or agree with are the leaders that are there to make their team better than they are, right? I am not there to be in the spotlight above my team. I am there to put my team on my shoulders and make sure that they're better at, at what they're doing than, than I could ever be. Uh, and so that's important too. And that comes with meeting people where they are, which starts with empathy. Um, there's that you know emotional intelligence element uh, that's thrown in there, uh, but leadership does require a lot of um, soft, skills, you know, like being able to listen and be patient and humble and, and being able to provide feedback, whether it's good or bad. Um, but in order to, to build yourself up to, to be selected for those things, um, personal brand is really important. And then when I say personal brand, the thought goes to, oh, well, what did my LinkedIn profile look like or, and things like that. But internal personal brand in an organization is everything, right? Are you a team player? Are you easy to work with? Are you that go-to? Are you okay with working that extra hour when we need to get this project done? Those are all things that in a silo just seem like you did this one little thing, but collectively, those are all the things that leaders think about when they're looking for, for other leaders. That was amazing advice. And I especially like what you said about a team, about a leader being empathetic with their people. They need to be, yeah. because it's your team. You have to be able to understand what they're going through because if you're not, then I don't yeah. know what you are. I don't know if you're a good not leader. A leader. If your team's not following you, then all it is is a title and it won't last long because you can yeah. only be as great of a leader as your team allows you to be. That is so true, very true. Um, another question to you is, what kind of value have you found through degrees, your degrees versus your certifications? Like, how would you or how can someone choose between a, getting a degree or getting a certification? Do you have a method that allows you to see, okay, maybe this, is, this certification is better mm -hmm. than this degree? Yep. Um, rule of thumb in all things, career, life, whatever, anything you pursue, it is about desired outcome. What is it that I'm trying to get out of this? 
and then you work backwards. So if you want to be a pen tester, for example, do I need a degree? That's an easy no, right? Because that is a really hands-on specialized skill set. And a degree program is really broad. So if you want to be something that is that requires a, a specific skill set like that, that's going to be more along the lines of certification, sure. But what's going to be more relevant is your hands-on experience. You know, what projects are you doing at home? Are you doing, you know, capture the flags and bug bounties and what's your portfolio look like? What is going to speak for you beyond just what, what you put on paper? And I mean, on the note of degrees and, and certifications in general, every you know everybody's doing it. I hate to say it that like that, but it, it's true, right? Everyone that wants to break into cybersecurity, uh, a large majority of those individuals take that path. I need to get something on paper. And so my message is, if 30 people walk into a room, put their resumes on my desk, all of them have the same degree, same certifications, how do I know who to hire? So what makes you different? And what can make you different is really understanding the path that you're going down and taking a targeted approach uh, to achieving that goal. So your desired outcome. If it's a highly skilled uh, requirement, then figure out how to, how, to hone, how to learn and hone those skills. If it's broader, like you wanna do uh, risk assessment, you wanna do pro, you know, security program management, then maybe a degree is, is, is better suited because it's broader, um, there's a lot of theory, um, and maybe it's considered more of a management level role and it would be helpful uh, to have the degree behind you just from a competitive perspective, even though you could go out and, and do the research on your own. So there's no one answer uh, to that question, but when you're deciding on your education, when you're deciding on the role that you wanna pursue, the company that you wanna work for, even the friends you have, right? What are your desired outcomes? Where are you trying to go? And does that thing that you're looking at right now really help you get there? Is it going to take you off course or is it going to get you, you know, closer to what you want to get? And that's, that's really how you make the decision. Awesome. Um, so what, what essential skills or traits do you think are important if somebody wants to come into a cybersecurity field? I think num top of my list is passion and aptitude. You have to love it or you'll hate it because it's, it's, it's ever changing, it's ongoing. You always have to, to learn. And that's where the aptitude you know, comes in. If you're a person that needs to, to sit down and read a book and then you got it and, and that's it. But if anything changes outside that and, and things start to color outside the lines, you get a little frazzled. Um, I, I think cybersecurity might drive you uh, a little crazy, right? You have to be a critical thinker, be ready to think outside the box, take nothing at face value because things may not be what they seem. And so if you're the type of person that likes to dig into the weeds, like my kids get annoyed with me because they're like, well, those two words mean the same thing. And I'm like, no, they don't. Because if they did, we wouldn't need two words for it, right? Yeah, but that's the, that's the way I think. So if you think like that and you're passionate and, and you want to make a change and keep this nation, your families and yourself safe, you can be successful. It's just skills. You know, just because you don't know it today doesn't mean you can't know it tomorrow. That's all, it's all, that's all it is. You know, people that are really successful and seem really knowledgeable, it's just that they've had exposure to something that you haven't yet, but you can get it too. Awesome. Um, our last question for you. Okay. What advice um, would you give to the young people that are watching this session right now? Um, two things. If there's something that you want to try, try it. If you fail, try it again, because uh, failure is part of the process. I find that often uh, individuals are scared to try things because they're afraid to fail. You cannot succeed without failure, but the most important thing is that failure is temporary. The only way failure is permanent is if you cease to try. So don't be afraid to try. Like I said, I'm a four-time college dropout, but now I have three degrees, and I'm a professor, like, because because I just didn't quit. So whatever it is that you're interested in, pursue it and pursue it with purpose um, and, and don't give up to chase it if it really means something to you and, and just make peace with failure because it, it's going to come and that's okay. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Tia. Just hearing your story and some of the answers to the questions, very inspirational. I like how you took or how you use kind of like your stubbornness that actually helped you through 
your cybersecurity career, just like you said, you know, how you're a college dropout multiple times, but you didn't let that stop you. You continue to pursue on. And now you're even a professor of cybersecurity. I find that really inspirational to see that just because you don't succeed the first time or maybe something doesn't come easy, doesn't mean that you can't continue that on. So thank you so much for sharing that with me. No problem. I'm gonna go ahead and open up a quick poll for everyone. This is just gonna ask a poll just um, to get a little bit about information about you and who our viewers are that are watching us right now. We are so appreciative of everyone for your attendance, whether you're joining us live or whether you're watching this recording. If you're watching the recording, we're hoping you can join us live on Wednesdays from 4 to 4.30 p.m. Central. We have a great lineup of, of um, speakers scheduled for the next few months, and we can't wait to share them with you all. As always, make sure you follow us on our social medias and subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on our latest posts. You can always find out more information about our programs through our website, cyberher.org, and information about our upcoming conversations. Tia, again, thank you so much for joining with us and sharing some of your wonderful words of wisdom. Very inspirational. We hope the rest of you will join us next week as we welcome Char uh, Charlene Goldfield. She is an attorney advisor for the Federal Communications Commission. But again, Tia, thank you so much. We hope everyone has a good night. Please join us next time for our next week's Cyber Conversation. Thank you. Have a good night.